In the world of professional hockey, few names hold as much weight as Sidney Crosby's. Known as one of the best leaders in the sport, Crosby has captained the Pittsburgh Penguins since 2007 and has led them to three Stanley Cups. Before he was drafted in 2005, he dominated all levels of junior and minor hockey, making him one of the most hyped prospects of all time. By the time he was 14 years old, he was dominating 18-year-olds and turning heads. This hype followed him into the NHL, where he has established himself as one of the greatest players of all time. But being one of the best players of all time will always come with a target on your back. Crosby was bullied, targeted, and put through hell in his prime years, as it seemed to be the only way to keep up with him. The years of torture led to many, many unfortunate injuries and a shorter time in his prime. Real quick pause, but if you guys have been subscribed to the channel for a while, you know I used to do compilation videos. So if that's something you're still interested in, subscribe to my second channel, where I'll be posting similar content. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Crosby's journey began on August 7th, 1987, in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Sid's father, Troy Crosby, a former goaltender for the Junior Canadians of the QMJHL, shaped his son's early hockey influences. During his early years in minor hockey, Crosby's remarkable skills attracted media attention, and he even gave his first newspaper interview at age 7. When he was 14 years old, Crosby joined the Dartmouth Subways for the midget level, scoring 193 points in 74 games. This led Dartmouth to a respectable second-place finish at the 2002 Air Canada Cup, where he was named MVP and the top scorer. As early as his midget seasons, Crosby faced challenges, including opponents deliberately attempting to harm him. He took a unique approach to avoid recognition, choosing not to wear his jersey between tournament games. In response to these difficulties, he attended the American Hockey Program at Shattuck St. Mary's Boarding School in Minnesota for the 2002-2003 season. There, he excelled, scoring 72 goals and 162 points in 57 games guiding his team to a U18 AAA National Championship. Crosby's journey took another step forward when he was chosen as the top pick in the 2003 midget draft by the Ramuski Oceanic of the QMJHL. As he stepped onto the QMJHL ice for the first time, he unleashed his skills, notching an impressive 54 goals, 81 assists in just 59 games. This stellar performance earned him the prestigious Jean Beliveau Trophy as the league's leading point scorer. Crosby's skills remained unparalleled upon returning to the Oceanic for the 2004-2005 season. His talent led him to the top of the league scoring chart, collecting a remarkable 168 points over 62 games. Ramuski's journey was rich in success, capturing the President's Cup as QMJHL playoff champions. Crosby added 31 points across 13 games in those playoffs. Crosby's presence left an unforgettable mark on the QMJHL. His impact was so profound that the league honored him by retiring his jersey number 87, not just for his own team, but for the entirety of the league. As the 2005 NHL entry draft rolled around, Crosby claimed the top spot as the best prospect in the draft. The QMJHL recognized his prowess by awarding him the Mike Bossy Trophy for being their best prospect. When the Pittsburgh Penguins made their pick on July 30th, 2005, it was no surprise that Crosby was their first overall pick. From Ramuski in the Quebec Major Junior League, Sidney Crosby. Sid the Kid made his NHL debut on October 5th, 2005, and he wasted no time leaving his mark. And three days later, on October 8th, he scored his first NHL goal. Still a loose puck picked up by Ricky. He shoots and scores. I think it'll Crosby. Crosby does get the goal. Sidney Crosby has scored his first goal ever in a Pittsburgh Penguins uniform. While high expectations surrounded the Penguins, the season ended with the worst record in the Eastern Conference. Still, Crosby's rookie achievements were notable, with new franchise records for assists with 63 and points with 102 by a rookie. He also wrote his name in NHL history as the youngest player to score 100 points in a single season. Crosby's dominance continued as he put up 120 points in his sophomore season, winning the Art Ross, Hart, and Ted Lindsay Trophy. Crosby continued to do the same thing up until the 2010-2011 season, where his career would take a turn for the worse. This was the beginning of Crosby's struggles. 
While many remember the first of these checks, there were two contributing factors to Crosby's first NHL concussion. The first came on January 1, 2011, at the Winter Classic between Pittsburgh and Washington. On the play, the puck goes past Crosby. As he looks behind him and turns to pursue it, David Steckles skates into Crosby and directly touches his head. Crosby didn't miss a game, returning to the Penguins lineup four nights later against the Tampa Bay Lightning. But against Tampa Bay, Crosby was hit from behind by Victor Hedman, and again, he struggled off the ice. That was the last game Crosby played in the 2010-2011 season, finishing with an incredible 66 points in only 41 games. This concussion didn't just keep Crosby out for the remainder of the season, it also delayed his start to the next season. Crosby didn't return to the Pittsburgh lineup until November 21st, 2011, against the New York Islanders. Here's Crosby with a burst of speed up the middle, gets up and scores! Welcome back, Sid! After returning from the aftermath of the Steckel Hedman hits, Crosby played only eight games between November 21st and December 5th of 2011. Crosby was also diagnosed with a soft tissue injury in his neck, causing swelling of the top two vertebrae. Although Crosby had been injured a lot in his time, he was still just as dominant. Between the start of the 2010 season and the end of the 2013 season, Crosby played in 82 games and recorded 140 points. From 2013 to 2016, Crosby enjoyed three mostly healthy seasons, missing just 12 games in the lockout-shortened 2012-2013 season. He followed that season by playing 80, 77, and 80 games in the three following years. However, the hockey world was taken by surprise at the beginning of the 2016-2017 season, when it was revealed that Crosby had been diagnosed with yet another concussion, this time from an injury in practice. This news came after an impressive run where he was a Hart Trophy finalist, a Stanley Cup champion, a Conn Smythe winner, and a gold medalist in the World Cup of Hockey. Despite high expectations for another standout year, Crosby's trajectory was shifted as he had to sit out at the start of the season due to a concussion he had in practice. His absence, though, was brief as he returned on October 25th against the Florida Panthers. Thankfully, Crosby remained concussion-free for the rest of the season, participating in 75 games and amassing 89 points, a performance that tied him with Patrick Kane for the second place in league scoring. Crosby's health, however, did not last long as he was hit with a cross-check to the head in Game 3 of the second round by Capitals defenseman Matt Niskanen. Fortunately, Crosby only missed one game before going on to win his second straight Stanley Cup. Throughout his career, Crosby has missed 114 total games from concussion-related injuries, and it really isn't crazy to think that he could have ended up with 170 more points if he played those games. There's no doubt that Crosby is one of the greatest and most influential players in NHL history. With three Stanley Cups and many individual accolades, Crosby will most likely end up on the NHL's Mount Rushmore. But with all of the time missed because of concussions, it's interesting to think about just how much better Crosby could have been, and if he could have added another Stanley Cup to his name. Crosby currently sits at 1,502 points in just 1,190 games, and without the missed time, he could have easily been close to 1,700 points, which would place him in the top 10 in all-time scoring. In the face of unrelenting pressure, Crosby's sheer determination propelled him to stand out as one of the most versatile players in NHL history. It's a letdown that Crosby's full prime was stolen by concussions and injuries, but we're lucky to have the privilege of witnessing the remarkable feats he has already achieved.